What's up YouTube? On this episode of Cariwapa Overland, we're going to be going to the Grand Canyon. Cariwapa Overland is proudly powered by Dan Cummins Off-Road, where you can completely outfit your vehicle and still retain their lifetime powertrain warranty. We're also brought to you in part by Overland Vehicle Systems, Trail Rated Coffee, Skinny Guy Campers, and More Expo. Also, if you're looking for some of our merch, make sure and check out shopoverlandapparel.com. When we left you on the last episode, we were at the El Mal Pais National Monument in New Mexico. The next morning, we woke up early because we had a long day of travel ahead of us. So what are we doing here? Well, we, we, <coughs> I messed the coffee pot up. And, uh, we're at, Can we lean it? Oh, there, that little thing's going to go in. The little thing go on? Yeah, the little thing's in. After a good hot breakfast and avoiding a near disaster with the coffee pot, we got some hot coffee and hit the road. Once we made it out to Blacktop, it was time to air up. We were going to have a lot of highway miles in front of us. The plan for today was to make it to Gallup, New Mexico, then head across Navajo country to near Page, Arizona, where we'd eventually make it to the Grand Canyon. The horizon here seems to go forever and the terrain changes with every mile. And it changes, I mean, over every mountain it changes. Okay. As we made it into the Marble Canyon, we crossed the famous Navajo Bridge. As we was marveling at the beautiful Colorado River below us, we couldn't help but to watch other people staring at these huge birds across the way. What we figured out was they were watching the super rare California condors. There are only a few hundred of them known to be in existence and a lot of them call this area around the Vermilion Cliffs home. After leaving the bridge area, we had to stop and check out the Cliff Dwellers Rocks. Kind of 
Soon we were back on the road, but it wouldn't be long before we were hitting dirt. We were getting closer and closer to our destination. Fancy meeting you out here in the middle of the desert. Joe and Josh from the YouTube channel The Day We Make had been out here in this area for quite a while. We met up with them and they were going to show us around this dry, dusty area. Joe said there hadn't been any rain here for weeks, but as we looked off towards Paige, yep, that's a rain cloud. We were all getting pretty excited. We'd been on the road all day. We were finally on dirt and knew that we were getting closer and closer to the Grand Canyon. I'm not sure if it was really that far out there or just the anticipation made it seem like forever getting to the rim. We had finally made it to the north rim of the Grand Canyon. After soaking in the view and setting up camp at this amazing site, it was time to fix dinner. Sam decided to help Deb with some of the cooking duties, so tonight he was fixing chili mac. It was Kelly's birthday. Oh, I just said that. Yeah, so. Not only was tonight special because we were on the Grand Canyon for the first time, but it was also Kelly's birthday, so Deb fixed him a strawberry pie. We woke up the next morning to a brisk breeze and an amazing view outside our front window. This morning's sunrise highlighted all new sections of the Grand Canyon that we hadn't seen in yesterday's sunset. It was truly amazing. I'm not sure that we've ever had a prettier kitchen to cook from or a dining room to sit and eat breakfast from. Kelly got to camp late last night, so he aired down this morning before we headed out onto the trail. Today's adventure was going to take us through the Kaibab National Forest, into the Grand Canyon National Park, and eventually out to Point Sublime.
As we continue to gain elevation, we started seeing signs for narrow and rough roads. This is exactly the kind of stuff we were looking for. As we continued to climb in elevation toward the Kebab Plateau, we definitely noticed a difference in the terrain. We had went from desert vegetation at about 5,000 feet to now being around 7,000 feet and in the pine trees. There's our first aspen trees of the trip. As we made it past 8,000 feet, we started encountering the beautiful aspen trees. Not long after leveling out on the plateau, we hit Blacktop. This will be Route 67. We took it south, taking it towards the north rim of the National Park. We try to take advantage of every gas station that we come across. We found this one and decided to stop and top our tanks off. This would end up being our most expensive fuel stop of the whole trip, at the tune of about $5.89 a gallon. After we had filled our tank and emptied our pockets, it was off to the National Park. As soon as we made it inside the park, we came upon a huge herd of bison. Deb swears that the National Parks feed their wild animals so they'll hang out close to the road so visitors can see them. Whatever the case may be, they were absolutely majestic. We eventually made our way in to the park and to the park office. We decided to check in there and see what the camping opportunities for Sublime Point were. There are two campsites at Sublime Point. You can reserve them at the visitor center. One of the sites had already been reserved and the ranger at the visitor center told us that our group could fit within one site. So we went ahead and reserved a site for Sublime Point for the night. The road at Sublime Point is dirt and it's not difficult at all, but I wouldn't recommend taking a car out there. At about the 11 mile mark, you were able to pull off to an overlook to get your first real look at the Grand Canyon. This isn't a camping spot. Yeah, I guess you can camp here, but holy shit. You can't see. Huh? I can't see. As we walked out to the edge of the Grand Canyon, it was like nothing that I had ever seen before. It was absolutely incredible. The pictures that I had seen and the videos that I've watched didn't do it justice. And I can tell you by standing right there, it still didn't look real to me. After catching our breath from that unbelievable view, we made our way on towards the Sublime Point.
18 miles after leaving the visitor center, we made it to Sublime Point. To say it was beautiful up there was an absolute understatement, but there was only two campsites and they were small campsites directly across the trail from each other. The other place was a little day use area. There's not much room at all up here. Out of all of the views we've had of the Grand Canyon so far, this one by far was the most spectacular. There's a reason they call it Sublime Point. We all agreed that Sublime Point will be an absolute incredible place to stay. We also agreed there wasn't enough room in that little campsite for all of us. So we all made the decision to move on to find a campsite that was a little more suitable for a group as big as ours. In order to find another campsite, we would have to leave the National Park property, make our way into either the Kebab National Forest or BLM land. We thought about staying here for the night, thought it might be a little too drafty, so we moved on. We continued driving and checking out the sights and the views. Before we knew it, it was turning to dark. It was time to find a campsite. By the time we found camp tonight, we would be back in the desert near the Arizona-Utah border. Even though it was a late night, everybody was still in good spirits. It was time to fix dinner. Late night. I hate that. Me too, but sometimes it happens. <laughs> My hamburgers are stuck together. <laughs> That's why they look like that. <laughs> Grilling paper and all. Yeah. <laughs> Long day, eh, Sam? Yeah, boy. Sometimes that happens, I guess. Hello again. Hey. Bye. <laughs> ready to go? After camp was set up and everybody ate, we hung around and got ready for the next day's adventure. This is one you don't want to miss. As always, let us know what you think in the comments below. And until next time, see ya.